So this will be my story. And um, so our, our theme today is grounding and reflecting. Uh, so these are going to be some of the things about where I live, my education, kind of family and career. But the big part is the challenges that I faced in my life and what I've learned from them, those, those challenges. So uh, we were first settlers. This is the original log cabin that, uh, that my grandmother was born in. Uh, yeah, my, the story goes that my great-great-grandfather was the first person to carry in a cross-cut saw. It was all, you know, the, the, it was just Indian trails. And my grandma told me stories when she was a little girl, she would stand at this door and the, there was a beaver meadow across the road. I guess back in those days it wasn't across the road, but um, the Indians really liked apples and, and there was apple trees. There's still some old apple trees on this property. And so her mother would make apples and they would barter with the Indians for baskets. And she said that an Indian would come and he would eat the whole pie right there. <laughs> My grandmother would be looking up at him. We just couldn't get over this, you know. So uh, that's my grandmother and this is my cousin. Uh, this is my, my father. My father died when I was 13 and my mother married the best man. So this is my stepfather and uh, I, like I knew him all my life. He was, uh, he was you know, he was a great, uh, great, wonderful uh, person. Uh, so anyway, I don't want to bore you with this stuff. Um, I was born on a farm, I was an only boy, uh, and there's 12 girls back the side road, so I got bullied a lot. And um, I had the same teacher for, for uh, eight years. Um, so when I, oh, here's a picture of my mom. And we lived, uh, I lived up, the farm was up by Own Sound, and my mother came from the Thornberry. Meaford area. Well, that's a picture of me uh, at seven months. Life was good. <laughs> <laughs> My mom said the day that she took me for this photo, she said it must have been one of the hottest days of the year. We never had a car. So what she had to do was walk out to the highway and hitchhike and take me to Meaford, hoping that I wouldn't be all sweaty and out of sorts sort of thing to get this picture taken. And this is my cousin. Um, they lived in Toronto, so that's me and my, my pet dog. Um, so anyway, I used to come to Kitchener area. Um, we, I was raised on um, family allowance, social assistance. We never had a car. And um, the disease that my dad had uh, eventually took his life. Um, you know, that was really difficult. It was just mom and I on the farm. We didn't have that. didn't have any brothers or sisters. So what I used to do is I would come to Kitchener and save up my money and go back to school for the, for the winter sort of thing. And then um, when I graduated, I just went right to, right to uh, Kitchener. <coughs> and in 1968, I met my wife, Bridget. Uh, we just celebrated on May, we met May 24th weekend. <laughs> so 48 years ago. Yeah. We met at Salvo Beach. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really something. Um, so then, um, in 1971, we got married. I served an apprenticeship in air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, and. and our daughter was born in 76, Heidi, and our son was born in 80. Uh, I injured my back in 82. And uh, William Roberts wanted me to go back and start up a, a division for them, so I went back there. And I started up two other departments for them when I was there. Okay. Oh, I got the wrong view here. <coughs> Uh, 
Ah, that's better. In 1990, my wife got cancer for the third time. That's really started to, to really, things shifted for me in my life. I was 40 years old. Um, you know, I, I just had a lot, lot on my plate. And uh, so we had, you know, my wife was spending quite a bit of time with her parents too because they were, they had different diseases. Um, there was a turn down in the economy in uh, 93. I lost my support staff and so I was wearing suits one day. I'd be wearing, you know, coveralls another day, that sort of thing. I was given a lot more responsibility, but I didn't have, have the support. So what happened was my health just started to go down, 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 down. By the time uh, 95 rolled around, I was driving home one night after work and my eyes went shut. As soon as I turned down our side road, my eyes went shut. And it took all my effort just to try to open my eyes. And they just shut again. And they did that three times. So I went to the doctor and the doctor said, he said, I've only ever seen this once before. He says, but you're going to have to resign. I love my job. I really did. And so that was huge. So, um, you know, I was losing my parents. My parents, my mom had Alzheimer's. Stepfather had um, cancer and degenerative heart failure. They're just parents both had cancers. You know, things were really, really, really hard. Really, really hard. And uh, so I, I resigned. And, um, oh, okay, that's basically my country school, where I went to school. And, oh, these pictures. This is me, I'm probably about, I don't know, 14 or 15. This is Bridget about 17, and this is me about 18. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Let me go back here. Um, so what happened? My health continued to uh, deteriorate, and probably the anger and the anxiety and the depression it probably started back in 1990. So. And it just kept building, year after year after year after year after year. So even when I changed my job, I still had all the other issues to deal with in my life. So that's when <clears throat> I thought there's got to be a better way. There's got to be something here. There's a, some, I don't know, it wasn't a voice, but there was just a feeling that there's something I can do about this. <coughs> Didn't know what it was. So then I started doing yoga. Uh, my body was in terrible, terrible shape. So I started doing yoga and it, it, be, it was, I knew that that was helping. Um, and the yoga teacher said there's going to be a meditation retreat up at Ignatius College. So I went there that weekend and I went on this meditation retreat. And I sat there, you know, I'm sitting there on Saturday and the teacher's giving the instructions and she says, just notice whatever comes up. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Just notice whatever comes up. Just acknowledge it. Okay, yeah, I can do that. And wow, I could, I could feel the difference. And so Sunday, I went back, and then the mind started getting involved. It's got to be more complicated than this. It's got to be more to it than that, Ross. You know, it just can't be just sitting there, just becoming aware of, of what's coming up. Because when you sit in a meditation posture, you're grounded. You're grounded, you have your legs crossed usually, and you're grounded. So the posture itself grounds you and helps to keep you safe. So then you can more easily just watch what comes up, watch what comes up, <coughs> if the mind doesn't start getting you know, tricky. So what happened was, for about six weeks after that, my energy was, was restored. So I knew that meditation, mindful meditation, worked. There was, because I was taking Prozac and Zoloft and a whole bunch of different drugs and going to counselors and you know like I, I was just really in bad shape and some of these drugs just weren't working but this just going and sitting made all that difference there's something here so um, then I went to that was in 97 or so 